Welcome back into another edition of TigerNet Talk Broadcasting live here on the front page of TigerNet each and every Wednesday evening, 10 p.m. We kick the show off. I hope that you will continue to come back and join us here on the program as we, uh, you know, throughout the summer, everybody knocks some of those programs out there. Maybe it's your favorite radio station, whatever, because they're not playing something you are talking about something you want to talk about. Maybe they're talking NBA, whatever. We mix that in every once in a while, but not too often here on the program. And I really do hope that you will join us each and every week right here live, 10 p.m. again. You can email us, tweet to us throughout the program. we got a great show lined up for you. Very excited about the program as tonight we will be joined by none other than Daquan Bowers, former Clemson defensive end and also now playing in the NFL for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He will join us in just a little while. So we'll see uh, if um, if he can come in and, and uh, you know, give you some insight into what it's like being in the NFL. Now then, we are going to uh, look a little bit uh, at also, you know, the, the one thing that's great about vocal is that we do have the ability uh, here to do the show for you each and every week and you can participate in our chat room with us you may also submit a text question to us there or tweet to us uh, the phone lines are always open 803-450-0086 803-450-0086 is the way you can get in touch with us and we've got a whole lot to get to. We're going to touch on some recruiting tidbits. But we start with the BCS format and the fact that we are now going to a four-team playoff in Hallelujah. It's finally time. I've said it for years here on the program. I've said it on other shows as well. You've got to uh, find a better way to decide who's going to be the champion each and every season. And the way that we are currently doing it doesn't get it right all the time. It might be close. But it's not perfect. It's a system that has had its flaws. It's had its moments where people feel like, you know, perhaps the best team is not involved. And then you had all these rules that everybody wanted to start working in. Does it have to be a conference champion, this, that, and the other? And I've always said that until we go to a real playoff like they have in the NFL, College football is going to suffer. And the biggest cry was, the biggest cry that people had was, oh, the money. You'll never make as much money. And I always said here on this program and others that there will be plenty of money. And you can already see that starting to trickle in as the, some of the figures begin to come down. And it looks more and more like you're not just talking about a few extra dollars. You're talking about three, maybe even four times that amount of money. That's impressive. And that's where we're headed right now. You've also got the Clemson folks out there that are concerned, though, and rightfully so. Now, for Clemson to get into this Final Four scenario, depending on how it ends up bearing out, you can be certain that you're probably going to have to be in the top four. Maybe a conference champ, maybe not. But you're going to have to be in the top four. If you are, if you are in that top four, then I think the, the question becomes, if you're a Clemson fan, how about how do we decipher if you're even better than maybe your top opponent, South Carolina? And here's what I mean. Assume Clemson goes to this 14 playoff and makes some money. And you get X amount in that you're going to split with your conference. But there are two teams from the SEC. Even though you've had an unbelievable season and played for the conference championship, there are going to be those out there that will say South Carolina, Georgia, those programs right in your backyard are getting twice as much money, perhaps because teams like LSU and Alabama or some other team from the SEC, Florida perhaps, puts in a couple of programs into this four-team field. And that's a little bit of the fear and the angst that some people have about it. I, for one don't really have that concern right now because as much as people will say, well, we should look towards the Big 12, you can look how close the Big 12 was just last season to falling apart to realize that if there is a shift towards four 16-team leagues, that maybe the Big 12 ends up being one that loses a couple of teams. 
And if you're over there, then where do you go? If you're left without Oklahoma and Texas, if they did end up taking a ride out to the, the Pac-16 at that point. So, you know, there there's no perfect answer right now. And we've got a couple of more years with this system, the BCS, which we all know is not a great system, but the one that we will live with. And it's ironic that everyone who defended this system for so long now has to defend it for two more years with the knowledge that people understand that it's not the best system available. And it's not some surprise. The NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, for crying out loud, they've been having playoffs for years, and we know it works. That's what we've always said. And you've got those people out there that say, well, you know, it's about the classroom and the kids not missing class. You know, we got to think about the educational process of these students. You know, these universities were founded to educate students. Don't, don't even, look, don't even come in here and try and blow that smoke. Just don't do it because you know and I know that's absolutely false because there are plenty of other schools in the football championship subdivision, Furman, you know, schools like that who have been playing in this, Walford, Appalachian State, these teams that have played in that system in the past. And, and, you know, I throw App State in there because of the dominance that they've had. But Furman and Walford are academic institutions right in our backyard. And they, pull, they manage it. They play a bigger system. In fact, that system is going to, that playoff at the FCS level is going to 24 teams. So if you think we're going to stay at, at four teams very long, you're wrong. Because the money is going to pour in. And that support from the presidents is going to continue. And just like we've always said here on our program, you are going to see the bowl games continue to exist, but in a different format. These big-time Bowl guys aren't just going to let their product go without a fight. But they want to be in the mix just as badly as everybody else because the real dollars, the, at the end of the day, the real dollars come from the advertisement. It's a reason you only see a few ads during the Super Bowl. You see Doritos and maybe Pepsi, Coke, Budweiser. You know, and GoDaddy's going to throw in one or two. Everybody else, you, you can hardly afford to get in on it. The commercialization of sports is great. It is great. And it is the reason that we are going towards this new playoff format. Because there will certainly be more money and abundance for everybody. But your big concern as a Clemson fan is, if you're the lone school from the Atlantic Coast Conference, and it's a lot to assume. It's a lot to assume that you're going to get to the championship anyway. Now, but it's already, your chances are already doubled in my mind. If there were only two slots before and there are four now, then the odds of you getting there have doubled. And had Clemson handled their business last season at the end of the year, they perhaps would have been one of the teams in the mix. And that's really all you can ask for. To climb into that number one or number two spot is quite difficult. But to get to four is not impossible for anybody, even a Clemson team who came from the outside looking in. But the bigger fear is the money and the difference in the finances that schools like South Carolina, like Georgia, those schools that you are recruiting against on a consistent basis, and others, what they can put into their coffers and spend at their university compared to what you can, it's a pretty big deal. Now, I will not be one, the person that's going to say, you know, we need to split this out evenly in every team and every conference. I can't see it working that way. The NFL kind of has that model. I mean, you, you, what, are you going to put a salary cap on how much is spent by each school during the, the season? You know, you can spend 50000 on or $50 million on facilities or, or whatever. I mean, I have no, no idea how big some of these pocketbooks are. But there's a huge amount of disparity. I mean, Texas is far and away more money than anybody else. Far and away. And so I, I just don't know how that's go, going to break down. And until we really know that, you've got to have a little bit of concern. But I think the system is already better. Knowing that this is coming has made me more excited about the college football season. And you know what's made me really excited about this next segment? 
We're going to be joined by none other than former Clemson player Daquan Bowers right here on the program in just a few minutes. We've got a couple of commercials lined up. We're going to get him on the horn. We're going to get him in. We've got the questions for him and a new, a new segment to our show when we have former players on. It's called the Clemson 10. We'll tell you all about that and more when we get back. Tweet your questions to hashtag TN Talk or ask them in the chat room. We'll be right back with Daquan Bowers right here on Tiger Net Talk. Just like Jeff Davis when I grew up, tackling Seminoles and Bulldogs, playing football in the mud. Say everybody sing Tiger Rag at the top of your lungs and we'll party like it's 1981. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. Edistooutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Have you heard? Proactive is better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway. Do you have troubled skin, acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive, your acne can heal and you can prevent new breakouts from happening. Be one of the first to try it by giving us a call at 1-800-556-2497 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive risk-free and also receive our legendary refining mask and green tea moisturizer free if you call right now. You heard it. Be one of the first to try better than ever proactive solution. You'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial, plus a free refining mask and green tea moisturizer. Call 1-800-556-2497. This is our best radio offer. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of proactive plus two free extras. Go to getproactive.com or call 1-800-556-2497. That's 1-800-556-2497. Have you ever wondered how you could make a difference in someone's life? What if you could help hundreds or even thousands of children? You might think it impossible, but it's within your reach. Right now, today, students in the U.S. rank 32nd in world math skills. It's time for our children to catch up, and you can help. Become an owner of one of the world's fastest growing franchises, Mathnasium. Mathnasium is the leading math-only learning center in the U.S. Its only purpose is to make our kids better at math. Imagine helping hundreds, even thousands of students in your community improve in school and raise their self-esteem, all while doing something you truly love. Call us at 800-663-9549 to learn more about Mathnasium's exciting franchise opportunities. That's 800-663-9549 to learn how you can make a difference. Doing something you truly love. That's 800-663-9549. 800-663-9549. Want to hear the sound of hassle-free traveling? All aboard! Amtrak takes the hassle out of traveling to over 500 destinations. You can stretch out in a spacious seat, relax in a sleeping car, and enjoy a hot meal in the dining car. And for those who want to kick back and take in the scenery, go right ahead. For everything you get on Amtrak, the one thing you won't get is this. So whether you're going to a family reunion or an away game, make it a whole lot nicer on Amtrak. Book your trip today at Amtrak.com or call 1-800-USA-RAIL. Moment of silence for the champions, for those who make going hard a lifestyle. Never wait for nothing, gotta get it right now. I'm in the spotlight. Welcome back into TigerNet Talk. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. Glad to be here with you. And we welcome into the program Daquan Bowers, former Clemson Tiger, now playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Daquan, I know that uh, you are a busy man, and I certainly appreciate you taking some time out to join us here on the program. No problem, man. I appreciate y'all having me on here tonight. Great, good, to, good, good to have you. Now, you, you, you've got to reflect. I think every great player reflects on their season, and especially your first year in the NFL. How does DeQuan Bowers grade himself in his first sixteen games in the NFL? You know, it was a, it was an okay year, but you know, I, I know what I'm capable of doing. You know, I kind of got in the swing of things late towards the end of the year, but you know, I. I just got to bring that enthusiasm that I played with late in the year all 16 weeks. You know, I, I know what I'm capable of doing, so that's just what I have to do. 
Now, now, fans and, and reporters, we don't really get to, to understand the preparation that goes in. What's the difference, the biggest difference in your mind, in preparation from the NFL level and the collegiate level? Well, you know, with college, you have so many different other things going on. You know, you have class, you have study hall, you know, you have tutors, you know, you have all different types of things. But, you know, in the NFL, this is your job. This is what, this is what brings your income in. So, you know, when we go to work, we're there until we can get everything situated and figured out, you know, however long it takes. You know, there's no study hall to keep you occupied or anything. It's just football. And there's my next question. Does do, How about fun? Does Is there a big difference in fun at the NFL level versus the collegiate level because of that? Oh, it's definitely fun. You know, you know, every every time you get the strap on the pads, it's fun. You know, uh, I love the, the excitement of the game. You know, it, it, it never changes no matter if I'm in Clemson Orange or I'm on Tampa, Tampa Bay Pewter and Red. You know, I just love playing in front of fans, you know, making the fans happy. And, I, you know, I still get the same rush that I had running down the hill when I went out the tunnel. Now, what did you think, and if you had enough time, what did you think about Clemson's football program last season? Oh, man, they made they made some big moves. You know, I was proud of the guys. You know, it was a tough season, but, you know, uh, they had a bullseye on their back. You know, they, they handled it very well, and I think they'll do even better this year. And that team bounced back from coming out of a, a losing season in, in your final year with them. Put yourself at Clemson senior year instead of in the NFL. What's that 2011 campaign like maybe for Clemson Tiger Nation at that point? You know, I think I would have been a tremendous help on defense. You know, I would have bought the leadership that wasn't there when it needed to be. You know, I could have made some plays that would have, you know, probably would have held on to a few more of those games, you know. And I, and I definitely think, you know, I could have been a big difference in that last ball game, you know, uh, putting up 70 points, you know. I've never allowed that in my oh. <laughs> I don't know that it's going to be a while before Clemson can uh, live down the Orange Bowl debacle. Now, in terms of, of great players coming in, you know, we saw a guy like Sammy Watkins come in as a true freshman. And right now, Clemson has a verbal commit. Obviously, that's not a binding commitment from the number one overall player in the country, Robert Kim Dietschy. A lot of people making comparisons between you two guys. And, and being somebody who came into college with those same expectations that maybe a guy like Kim Dietschy will have on him, what advice would you give him, regardless of where he lands, as to the pressures that that are there for a freshman who has such high accolades coming out of high school? You know, uh, first of all, there shouldn't even be a comparison. That guy is way better than I ever was when I came out of high school. I watched him on, and he's a dominant player, you know, and, and no matter what school he goes to, he's going to be a big help, you know, and I hope it's Clemson. I hope he's on the, on the end along with Malachi and Corey Crawford, but, you know, they could very, very, very well use him. At anywhere on that defensive line because he's just that type of caliber player. Now you you say you've watched film. Have you actually have you met him? Have you seen him I in person? I haven't had a chance to meet him, but you know I've heard a lot of good things about him from Dabo and the rest of the guys. You know I heard he's a very a very humble kid, and you know uh, that's what Clemson's all about: class, you know, and, and great ball players. So you know I uh, I know he saw the history of defensive ends that we've produced over the last couple of years. Of, starting with Gaines Adams and myself and Ricky Sapp and Andre Branch last year and Malachi Goodman coming up this year. But, you know, uh, it's a lot of history there, and I know he wants to be a part of it. So hopefully he'll stick with his guns and go with the bleeding orange. You're listening to Tiger Net Talk. This is Lawton Swan speaking with Daquan Bowers, former Clemson Tiger football player, and now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, tweet your questions to us, hashtag TNTalk throughout the week, uh, and we'll try and get them to uh, Daquan uh, if we have to through the Twitter sphere to find out the answers if you don't hit us up during the show. Now, Daquan, one thing people may not realize, but the small town you're from, Bamberg, South Carolina, has put out a lot of great athletes. Is Mookie Wilson still the most famous? Uh, I, w I would think so. You know, uh, Mookie's done a lot for that time. You know, he was one of the first to actually put Bamberg on the map, and, you know, and then his son came along, Preston, and did the same thing, you know, and later on down the line, my cousin Ricky and I came about, but, you know, uh, we've, we've got a lot of great talent, you know, we've, uh, since my high school days, we have had a lot of athletes to go on to play football and a lot to play Division One ball, and we have just as many young guys now coming up that are getting scholarship offers. I have a younger cousin there 
that has got about 20 offers already as a junior, as a wide receiver. And, you know, there's other guys there at that school that's talented, and they're going to be getting their offers soon, too. Yeah, what what once was a baseball power in Bamberg Earhart has now turned into a, a football machine, really putting out a lot of, of great players. Um, you know, here is a new segment on our program that we're, we, we've added in for any time we have a former Clemson player on, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, what what be it. We're calling it the Clemson 10 here on TigerNet Talk, and I'm, I'm going to ask you 10 questions. You don't have to go into a whole lot of detail, just short answer, rapid fire, and, and then we'll get you on your way. And, again, Daquan, we really appreciate you spending some time with us. But I'll start with question one. What does Clemson mean to you? Clemson means to me is family and tradition, two of the most important things that I could possibly receive out there. Describe the first time you ran down the hill on game day. Petrified. Scared I was going to get tripped up. <laughs> Who's had the biggest influence on your life? Uh, my father. You know, my father was a great influence on my life. You know, he taught me everything I know, so everything I do, I just kind of keep him in the back of my head. Favorite spot on Clemson's campus? Uh, fight them. That's where it all went down. That me and the guys would go play basketball all summer long. There you go. Fight legends. I hear you. Greatest moment during your time at Clemson? Oh, uh, my greatest moment at my time at Clemson was, uh, winning defensive player of the year, you know, to a defensive guy. That's like the Heisman Trophy. You know, it doesn't get any better than that. Toughest moment for you during your time at Clemson? Oh, wow. Uh, having a losing season. Mm. How about your most difficult class at school while you're there? My most difficult class, um, my freshman year, econ at 8 o'clock in the morning. Best stadium to play in on the road? Best stadium to play in on the road, um, without a doubt, uh, Dope Campbell. Number nine, so you got one more after this. What's one thing most people don't know about you? Most people don't know about me. I'm a big guy, but I really don't eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, number 10, in 10 years, what do you hope Clemson fans will remember about Daquan Bowers? Uh, in 10 years, I hope they can just remember the type of guy I was. You know, in my, my short three years, that I tried to do everything in my power to make sure that I was one of those guys that they remembered. 10 and 20 years from now, you know, like the Jeff Davises, you know, like the T.J. Spillers, you know, guys like that, like the Frank Howards, you know, all those guys, the Perry Tuttles, all the legends that you hear about when you're coming and being recruited and they, your whole time there. I just want them to remember me for the things that I've done and things that I did, not only on the field, but off the field as well. Well, I, I, I want to give you a prime example of that, and, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. I got an email when everybody found out that you were coming on the show from a, a Clemson fan named Scott, and he said that he was, he and his son Wyatt were at the French Broad Music Festival in Hot Springs, North Carolina, and the Singing Stars yep. ba band came up to play, and he kind of had an inkling who you might be. He was like, man, who's this big guy that's playing the guitar so well? He says afterwards... Uh, you gave his son his, your autograph on his Jimi Hendrix shirt. He he said, man, let me tell you, he said, what a guy. He wanted to share that with everybody out there that, you know, it was more than just the football aspect of Daquan Bowers that made you great. Well, if you ever have contact with Scott and if Scott listen, I greatly appreciate that. You know, that's that's what I'm here to do. All right, Daquan, man, I tell you what, we, we spoke during the break. I do want to get you on during the football season. I'll let you get back to resting and, and prepping up for the big year, but I know all of Clemson Tiger Nation wishes you the best of luck down there in Tampa this season. Hey, I really appreciate it. Hopefully I can get back on during the season. Go Tigers. All right, Daquan Bowers, let me tell you what, that guy is jam up, and, I, and I, I'm not even kidding you. He's an unbelievable guy. As great of a football player as he is, he is humble. And I think, you know, when you when you think about these young men who, who come out of smaller towns perhaps and, and they're all of a sudden, you know, Bamberg, uh, literally, I mean, it's a two, three stoplight town. I mean, I'm not knocking the place. I grew up right near there in a little town called Barnwell, South Carolina. Great football back in the day. 
But, you know, for a guy like Daquan Bowers to go to Clemson with the high expectations, to you know, one, to stay in state, two, to go to a school, you know, they produce the likes of Chris Franklin, uh, Ricky Sapp, you know, Daquan, of, of course. And then you've got uh, Preston Wilson, who was coming to Clemson to play baseball before he went pro. Um, you look at some of the young guys like Daquan mentioned who are coming up. That town has put out a ton of great players to Clemson. And I tell you what has, has most impressed me, though, is that those guys, they're coming up and they are very disciplined off the field. And they are focused on what they've got to do. I, I think, you know, there's only really been one guy out of Bamberg that I remember landing at Clemson and not being completely maybe as successful as people expected. That was Chris Franklin, but we appreciate Daquan Bowers being here, and we will be right back to wrap up the show right after this. Stay with us here for more Tiger Net Talk. Have you ever wondered how you could make a difference in someone's life? What if you could help hundreds or even thousands of children? You might think it impossible, but it's within your reach. Right now, today. Students in the U.S. rank 32nd in world math skills. It's time for our children to catch up. And you can help become an owner of one of the world's fastest growing franchises, Mathnasium. Mathnasium is the leading math only learning center in the U.S. Its only purpose is to make our kids better at math. Imagine helping hundreds, even thousands of students in your community improve in school and raise their self esteem, all while doing something you truly love. Call us at 800 663 9549 to learn more about Mathnasium's exciting franchise opportunities. That's 800 663 9549 to learn how you can make a difference. Doing something you truly love. That's 800 663 9549. 800 663 9549. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. Edistooutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Listen, if you're considering buying hardwood flooring, don't do anything until you've written down this number and received your free Lumber Liquidators catalog. The flooring was high quality with an unbeatable price tag. Call in the next 10 minutes to get your free catalog. What I bought at Lumber Liquidators is a vastly higher quality than flooring I had installed six years ago and for a fraction of the cost. So if you want great hardwood flooring at unbeatable prices, trust Lumber Liquidators. We buy direct from the mills. Call right now to get our flooring guide and catalog absolutely free. It's filled with top quality hardwood flooring, including solid hardwoods, laminates, and bamboos, and even Bella Wood prefinished flooring with a 100-year transferable warranty. The same floor Bob Vila has in his home. This free catalog is full of tips, ideas, and our flooring project list to make your buying decisions easy. Hurry, call right now to get a copy of this free guide and catalog. Call 877-238-6302 to get your free copy now. 877-238-6302. 877-238-6302. Have you heard? Proactive is better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway. Do you have troubled skin, acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive, your acne can heal and you can prevent new breakouts from happening. Be one of the first to try it by giving us a call at 1-800-556-2497 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive risk-free and also receive our legendary refining mask and green tea moisturizer free if you call right now. You heard it. Be one of the first to try better than ever proactive solution. You'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial, plus a free refining mask and green tea moisturizer. Call 1-800-556-2497. This is our best radio offer. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of proactive plus two free extras. Go to getproactive.com or call 1-800-556-2497. That's 1-800-556-2497. Well, if you recognize that little tune, you might be aware that there is a Clemson Tiger basketball player 
Brian Narciss, who uh, was selected to play for the Harlem Globetrotters. He'll have an opportunity to try out. Good for him. You know, he, he participated in that dunk contest. I think he came in third. Brian with a lot of hops, a uh, high-energy guy. I'm sure he, if he makes the squad, will be somebody who they utilize in finishing around the rim and not taking jumpers. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Maybe he'll become like the, the half-court specialist. But, you know, Brian's a great kid out of the North Augusta area. He's a, a young man who, uh, if you follow him on Twitter, you, you just he continues to put out great, impactful uh, things, and and I hope that he does well and with his opportunity here to play professional basketball technically and see the world. That's the other great thing. They they are still the Globe Trotters. They still go all around the world. I guess they still play the Washington Generals. Um, when I was a kid, you know, it was uh, pretty good entertainment, I think, the entertainment value, you know, Metal Art Lemon and uh, Curly Neal and those guys throwing the bucket of water that's uh, actually confetti on the referee instead of a fan and you know, the old routine, the, the the weave and everything that they do. But for a guy like Brian Narciss to get this opportunity, it's big and more exposure for Clemson. I think Clemson's only had one other guy uh, who got an opportunity to play for the Globe Trials. Again, Brian will get that chance. Now, typically on the program, we do a lot of recruiting talk here. Of course, the latest news out of Pendleton, South Carolina, Michael Hill, four-star defensive tackle, who's, you know, had been a – an interest of many of, of Clemson nations. Uh, I know that uh, obviously there are a lot of people out there who knew that or felt like he wasn't going to come to Clemson. And, and the bigger target probably being Montrevi- Montrevis Adams, who is actually in Clemson right now through the weekend. But Hill, in a surprising turn, was coming to Clemson to for a visit and then uh, went ahead and opted to commit to Ohio State and Urban Meyer. So uh, that's kind of the latest little recruiting tidbits and updates there. Uh, Also, one other guy that we mentioned last week, Austin Drugsma, of course, down to Florida State and Clemson. His father played at Florida State, so he's got a little bit of a a legacy there. Um, But we will continue to keep our eyes on this Clemson recruiting uh, during the offseason as we roll along. We have still got to get to our facility segment we're going to touch bases with some people over in the athletic department hopefully have an interview for you next week as well to find out how facilities are improved and look back at some of Clemson's facilities all that if we don't have a new uh, if my wife doesn't give birth here in the next week or so we're getting very close to that moment but we'll keep you updated on vocal with when and if we are going to be on we'll update the show of course the guys over at TigerNet always punching us through on the front page and of course www. ClemsonPodcast.com is your other place to go. We've added a a new store feature over there, a storefront called the Tiger Store. Go in there, check out the Pitchfork Return shirts that we've got. We've also got some Clemson Hotline shirts. I hope that you'll support us that way. Uh, Continue to tweet to us. We're at Clemson Podcast. We bring you more Clemson news, notes, and information 24 hours a day, seven days a week than anybody. I mean, we tweet at 3 a.m. You don't want your uh, phone to ring every time you get a tweet from at Clemson Podcast, or you will not get any sleep. And, of course, questions and emails and thoughts can always be, uh, I guess I shouldn't say emails, emails, Clemson81 at gmail.com. All that's on the bottom of the screen. We're going to have the archived version of the show on our new YouTube channel in high quality. You can also chat with us on vocal. Uh, There's so many ways to take part in the program. Uh, As a matter of fact, we're going to take a text question right now. We go out to Matt's question. Matt says, do you think Clemson has a chance at the national title this year. Well, I, I wish Matt I had the uh I wish I had the clip from Dumb and Dumber when uh you know he, he, he says more like one in a million she says more like one in a million and he's like, So you're telling me there's a chance. Do you think Clemson has a chance at the national title? Absolutely. I, I I'll be honest with you, I think there are probably a, a certain percentage, maybe thirty some odd teams coming into the season that have a chance as something like the national title. Obviously, the system that we're currently in, it is much more difficult, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, for Clemson this season, though, it's going to be the play of both the defensive line and the offensive line that really uh, decide where this team goes. It's a very favorable schedule, as we've continued to say here on the program. Uh, you, you think about the fact that, you know, you really your toughest road game is going to be that one at Florida State, especially if you can get by 
that opening ball game against an Auburn team. And, and, and Auburn's interesting because they've got a new offensive coordinator and a new defensive coordinator. So that's going to be a bit of a question mark for you coming in because it's not the exact same preparation that you had last year. But you've got very favorable road games in conference play. You go to Boston College. You go to Wake Forest. You go to Duke. Those are your conference road games, including that one at Florida State. I don't think it could shape up any better for Clemson. Unfortunately for the Tigers, uh, you've got a team like Virginia Tech still on your schedule this year, a very good team, picked to win the Coastal Division. You've got South Carolina on your schedule, a team that you can't discount any longer. You look at the way the Gamecocks have manhandled Clemson the past few seasons, and I, I've, I'll be honest with you, if the question is, does Clemson have a chance to win the national title? Yes. Is my expectation for Clemson to win the national title this year? No, I don't think I'll be going into the season predicting Clemson to win every single ball game, And I, I think that's a fair place to be right now if you're Clemson. You look at skill position players, though, offensively in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Clemson's far and away the most talented team. And don't be fooled by those people that say that Logan Thomas is the number one quarterback in this conference because he's not. In my mind, it's still Taj Boyd. Sure, Taj had a, a slow um, – he, he kind of finished the season a little bit of a downturn. I don't know if it was more so – people catching up with Taj, maybe a little bit of Taj catching up with himself in his head, get th thinking a little bit more than reacting. And, uh, you know, this season is going to open up without a guy like Sammy Watkins perhaps. Maybe Sammy's out one, two, could it be even three games? And yeah, Dabo Sweeney's yet to make his determination on that. But do I think Clemson has a chance at the national title? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you've got to have a magical season. You've got to have one of those years where uh, when your running back puts put, – puts the biscuit on the ground in a road game late, you fall on it instead of the opponent. You've got to have uh, the opportunity where perhaps a team is uh, driving the ball down the field late and they throw a, a critical interception off of a tip ball that you've made a play on. If, if you're going to win the national championship in this day and age, it, it takes a lot of luck. Let's just face it. And, and, you know, the old saying is I'd rather be lucky than good. And that's 100% true in this regard because you've got to have a little bit of luck to get there. Alabama had to have a ton of luck to get there just to get back in it after losing during the regular season. I mean, there are so many teams vying back and forth to get there. And that's why I like the expanded four-team playoff. I'll be happy when it goes to eight because that gives you some leeway, Matt, to have those letdown games. And I know they're disappointing to the fan base when you walk out of the stadium with a loss, but it sure does make coming back the next weekend. You know, I'll give you a prime example. Let's just assume that Clemson were to lose on the road at Florida State. Well, in the current system, you're not out of it completely, but you're close to being out of it completely. And ESPN and everybody out there tries to sell you. They try to sell you on, oh, the one-loss teams are still in it. Not, not so much. Let's be honest. Because if a couple of teams or three teams go undefeated, those one-loss teams aren't still in it. And to, make one, and to have one game, you know, these people that say, well, having it that way makes every game a playoff. Well, what, what good is it then after you lose week one, you might as well pack it up and go home. If every game is a playoff, if, you know, Clemson loses to Auburn, well, pack it up. It's basketball season, folks. Break out the round balls. So you, you can't have that mentality that it, this old system makes it better because every week is a playoff because we all know that's not true. The ratings showed it when Alabama and LSU got back together again, and people said, you know what, we're not interested in seeing that game again. I think it was a, a bit of the rematch factor. It was the fact that Oklahoma State had looked like a team that could compete. O Oregon had a fantastic year as well. And the SEC locking up their sixth straight national championship before the game was even played. Before the game was even played. With two SEC schools playing for the national title. That's when change started and it, it needed to. But nonetheless, I, to be honest with you, yes, absolutely. And, and people can say, you know what, Swanee's ludicrous. He doesn't know what he's talking about. No, Clemson has a chance. They have a, a, a very slim chance right now. But it could be one of those special years. I mean, if you just started the 1981 season and, and, and called into this show, if this is, um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, if this is June of 1980 and we're doing this thing, I, I guess, uh, did they do it over the telegraph back there? Did they have radio in 1980? Someone have to call in and let us know. <laughs> but, you know, if you're doing your show back then and the question is posed, people aren't going to say, oh, yeah, this is it. This is the magic year. 
you know, you're coming off of a pretty poor season the year before. You got a team like Georgia on your schedule who's fantastic. I mean, you got a lot of hurdles to get there. Uh, for Clemson to, to get the job done that year it was an incredible run. And, and Clemson, you know, you look at the years after that, a couple of nine one and one seasons, you know, you got some 10 win years in there. But hitting that magical 11, 12 win season, it's hard to do. Not a lot of teams do it. Typically, only three or four teams do it every year. But this is the best system that we currently have. We're going to deal with it for another couple of seasons, and then we're going to get into something much better, and I hope it will expand. I don't think it needs to get too big. I think eight teams is probably the sweet spot. I think we'll go to 16, and maybe it'll retract at some point. Uh, Some people would say the NCAA tournament needs to be retracted down to 32 teams. When you look at some of the play, I, I know you like your Cinderella's. You like to see your big upsets. But people don't really like the the, uh, the first four where they're playing to get into the tournament. People haven't really bought into that concept. Clemson counts it as an as a NCAA tournament win, and it is. We have one. We played our way in. But I don't think the majority of the fans like it. I think you could end up seeing that uh, change. I think you could see it going big and then maybe falling back in the mix. Now, finally, before we get you out of here, I want to let you know, if you hadn't heard about this, Clemsoning is now in the Urban Dictionary. That's right. Clemson has made their way into the Urban Dictionary. And I'm going to leave you with this little this little nugget because I think you, uh, those of you who uh, support Clemson will probably not like this very much. Clemsoning. It is now in the definition books on uh, the Urban Dictionary. The act of delivering... An inexplicably disappointing performance, usually within the context of the college football season. Ouch. I guess, Matt, you could say Clemson has Clemsoned their way out of national championships in the past. And they show a video of Taj Boyd throwing that ball up against Florida State when he was falling to the ground. But you know what? We won that game. (laughs) Take that for Clemsoning. We'll be back next week right here with more Tiger Net Talk. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. Tweet to us, email us, give us a call, go by the website, check out the store, and look for the archived high quality version of the program. Till next week, we'll see y'all. And as always, y'all take care now and go Tigers! <laughs>